I invite you to really, really contemplate about where change comes from, how change happens. Today, I want to talk about a call to action. What we just heard from Ayana was a call to action. Last week, Reverend Robin Reitner was here. She graced us the whole weekend. She covered my class on Wednesday night when I was in Unity Village serving on the ordination committee. She came Friday night. She was here all day Saturday. She spoke through two services Sunday. And, and she moved us through a process that created a new mission statement, a new mission. And what I want to invite everybody, I've watched her talk a few times on Facebook, is what I've realized is the new mission came from within every one of us. Whether we were here or not last weekend, whether we actively participated or not, our attendance and our involvement in this ministry in infinite ways during the week, at classes, at meetings, at prayer circles, behind the scenes, all of us together have called forth a new mission and a new idea for this church. It is consciousness itself that speaks to us in our lives. It is consciousness that allows each one of us to have inner conversations with ourselves. And it is the consciousness of all of us together that called forth 30 or 40 people last weekend to speak what God is speaking through us. This new mission statement you heard is an invitation for each one of us to look within ourselves. What is the God idea for our life? What is being spoken through us here and now in the present? For this church, Unity of Hollywood is a spiritually progressive community dedicated to healing and transformation transforming the lives of all people, all people, through prayer, education, and love. And what a powerful statement of who each one of us is, how each one of us participates in this ministry, and ultimately the call to action, how each one of us can change everything in our life. You see, our mission, it has already materialized. It is complete. It is an idea in our mind. The idea is complete in our mind. And what we believe is, is that there's an understanding of the Trinity that is mind, idea, expression. Mind, idea, expression. And so I looked over this and I thought about it. And, and, and one of the unique and great qualities of Unity of Hollywood, which actually relieves me from the moment I walked into a Unity church, is I can bring my mind. I can disagree. I can think about it. I can discern it. I can, I can look at Ayana and say, Ayana, that works for you. It doesn't work for me. She can look at me and say, Rev, man, I really tried this, but I don't really click with that. And so we are not a church that forces everyone to give up their individual mind to celebrate Christ in their life. And, and this is not in the majority today. Yes, yeah, celebrate ourselves. And, and I thought about what a gift it is to have a mind in church. Wow, what a gift it is to have a mind in church. And then I thought about our new mission statement, which I prayed over all week. And I thought, our mind is the place of prayer. Our mind is the place of education, and our mind is ultimately where true love exists. You see, when we pray, what we're doing is taking our mind and creating a picture that transcends the appearance of the day. If there's a health challenge, we're holding the idea of health and healing in our mind. If there's financial difficulties, we're holding praying the idea of abundance in our mind. And even when there's conflict and all hell breaks loose, the prayer of harmony holds the idea of unity in our mind. And then we educate ourselves. And education is a mind thing. 
It's a willingness to say, I don't know everything there is to be known. And as long as I live and as long as I breathe, I am willing to learn more about myself and my relationship with everybody and everything in the world. This learning happens where? In our mind. And love through prayer, through education, and through love. We're not talking about lust. We're not talking about a soap opera love. We are talking about love as a quality of God that transcends the physical. We are talking about the love that exists as an idea in the mind of God. I was thinking about this this week. I was thinking about the mission statement this week. I was thinking how we're, we're opening up February, which I always look at in my own mind as American History Month, but we all know as African American History Month. And I was thinking how the African American experience in our country demonstrated the qualities of prayer, education, and love. I was looking and thinking about it historically 400 years to get to a place and we still have more to travel. We still have room to grow. And I was thinking about it as I looked about what was going on in Egypt and I'm praying for them this week. And I looked at all this world conflict and then I looked at, at a people who had more right than any people I know of historically to take up arms and revolt, but yet it was a process of education through the court systems, going back to Frederick Douglass, going back to Dr. King, to Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman, to Howard University, you know, to Morehouse, and it was a process of prayer. Believe me, it had to take prayer to survive those, those marches and the fire hoses and the dogs and the hate and the racism and not fight back. I, I, I thought in my mind about, about Jackie Robinson, one man who in 1947 integrated baseball and, and the newsreels and the hate and the racism and the spitting and the throwing of watermelons at him and how spiritually centered he had to be to stand there and then play baseball and do it well. And, and, and the lesson for all of us is that when we face our inner challenges, when God in us calls forth change, a new vision, a new mission, a new idea, prayer, education, and love is all we need. And then I thought to myself, you know, my mind wanders when I think. When you, and I thought to myself, why would, you know, Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman, a Baptist Christian minister, and, and Reverend Dr. King, also the son and grandson of a Baptist Christian minister, f go over to India and study Gandhi, who was a Hindu leader. And I thought that the statement it says is another beautiful reminder of who we are, is, is that we are one in this world. There is no Hindu and Christian. There is no male and female. There is no slave and free is what the Bible says. I see how Dr. King was able to, to reach across the, the ocean, literally and metaphorically and theologically, to say, Gandhi has a role. I, I, I want what you have, India, and I want to obtain it the way you had it through nonviolence. And that, that God, what Dr. King says is Christ furnished the spirit and motivation for civil rights, but Gandhi showed us the method. Amen. And, and so this, this mission is there is one God, and no separation exists, and now we have a clear and concise mission statement, mission 2011, mission possible, if you will, that says who we are that declares who I am to the world and who you are to the world. And, and I believe there is a Christ inside each one of us as that perfect idea in the mind of God that has called forth our new mission into being this day. And, and, and I share with you, as I read the mission and I read it again and I spoke it, I was like, this new mission, it's courageous. 
This is a courageous statement. This is a statement that is worthy of all of our participation and all of our support. Because last week what I realized is there is a mind that we understand is our church. There is a divine idea in the mind of God that we call unity of Hollywood. And the right people in the right place prayed together and chose the right words and called forth a mission, as Reverend Robin described it, with a growing edge for a new spirit to move our church forward. And our church moves forward as we individually move forward in our own life. Our church is never bigger or greater or more glorious than, than each one of us as we see ourselves as big and great and glorious in our life. You see, no organization grows without a focused mission. No relationship grows without a unified mission. In relationships, a lot of times they're unspoken agreements. All right? But, but we need clarity of what we are, want out of a relationship and what we're willing to put into the relationship whether it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship, whether it's a family relationship, whether it's a relationship that needs healing, or whether it's a relationship that needs a reevaluation in our lives. You see, the Bible is clear. This is not sound leadership principles, or it is sound leadership principles, that no organization grows without a focused vision. But, but it's not some new idea. Because in the Bible it says, without a vision, people perish. Now let's understand that's a metaphor because you can, I can walk through my life with no vision. Mediocrity to mediocrity. Never grow, never transcend, never heal, never answer the call to action in my own life. That doesn't mean my heart is going to stop my breathing and I'm going to fall on the floor and perish. Perish is a metaphor. It's basically saying it's mediocrity if you have no vision. It'll be the same old, same old if you have no vision. That is not what came forth last weekend. What came forth last weekend is a vision for this community to blow the metaphorical roof off this building. Yes. And each one of you are going to help and participate because I feel it and I know it and I believe it. George Barnes, a, a church consultant, a very wise man, says, a vision for ministry is a reflection of what God is accomplishing through the people. Amen. See, we understand we co-create with God. We understand God moves when we move. God lifts when we lift. God turns when we turn. And that is why I understand when he says it's a reflection of what God has already called for Unity Church of Hollywood. John Maxwell is another prominent church consultant and leader and writer and author and speaker and minister and preacher. And John Maxwell says, our vision will unfold and evolve in a threefold manner. He says, first, the ability to see. That's awareness. We're going to speak it every week at the conclusion of our greeting time starting next week. We're going to come together and we're going to Shift our awareness. Then it's the ability to believe. He says that's attitude. And then there's the ability to do. That's action. No one of us will grow and change and transform and heal and dedicate ourselves without a changed awareness, a new attitude, and a little action thrown in. You know, while it takes prayer to go to church, and, and while it takes prayer to solidify a church, and prayer is absolutely the foundation that unity was built on. Prayer is the foundation my own individual healing has been built on. Prayer is the foundation that Ayana's life has been built on, and almost every one of us can line up and come up here and share a story of how prayer changed our life. We are a church of prayer. And, and while it takes prayer, and I celebrate prayer, I want you to point out there's some other stuff that has to go into the mix. Praying calls forth action, calls forth demonstration, calls forth commitment. We can't just pray for God 
to do something in our lives and then take a seat and wait for it to happen. You know, I was thinking about that as like, man, I would love if I had the power to get on my knees and have my sermons downloaded right onto that Kindle. Like, I would just love if I, I, you know, I would join hands and I would pray and light candles and incense and whatever it would take. You know, and, and Dr. King said something. He said, you know, if you want me to talk for four hours, I'll be ready in 20 minutes. But if you want me to talk for 20 minutes, it will take me two days. Because this mission is, is our worship experience. It's one of our core values. I, I believe this time that, that, that we share on Sundays is crucial. That is why our musicians are here from 8, 8.30 in the morning rehearsing and singing and rehearsing and singing. They're already rehearsing what we're singing next week this morning. I heard them. And, and that is why the hospitality people are here at 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning cutting and cleaning fruit and everything. I'm sure, you know, those hospitality people, they would just love if, like, the windows of heaven opened up and the trays just floated and the coffee just brewed itself and the cups just elevated. Like, oh, y'all, don't you just worry that the mics just set themselves up and, like, Tim just, you know, did a special dance and all the music and Paolo and Alvaro and Sheila and Sandra and Julian and, and Cynthia, just all, don't you wish, Tim? That's all it took was like, boom, and you're all on key, and you're all in harmony, and you're all in tempo. But maybe it takes some work to make Sundays happen in our church. Whew, I'm gonna breathe for me. Just thinking about that exhausted me. Wow. Oh. You know, Sundays don't just happen, and a lot of love goes into it. We already celebrate and demonstrate a lot of love every time we take part in the offering, every time we pray on that prayer box. You know, we, we celebrate, we express a lot of love for Mildred. I was told you were never supposed to tell a lady's age, but I guess when you get 90, <laughs> we can celebrate it, right? My God, my God, we can celebrate it, you know. And, and, and the lesson and the participation and the invitation on today is to really embrace this mission for your own life. And then spirit will take care of the rest. You know, people just won't find our church, although it didn't happen once. I will tell you once, a few months ago, a couple came in and they were looking for a church. They were looking for a different church and stumbled into ours by accident and loved it. But th that doesn't happen that often. It happens when people invite their friends to see what we have. Because what we have is great and loving and unique. What we have is wonderful and joyful and inspiring. And everyone in this room knows three people that wants what we have right here and right now. And so we can just pray and hope, you know, a hundred people get lost this year and lose their directions and just by accident drive into our parking lot and just, oh wow, there's a church here. Oh, get cute, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, or we can forward those YouTube videos. We can throw, you know, let people experience what we have. I was thinking about how this week this church has been around for 50 years and we'll never even know how many people this church has touched, yeah. how many people this church has healed. People that have never even sat with us hear our messages. I get prayers through Facebook and I know that the leaders in the church get prayer requests through Facebook. We just unconditionally behold the Christ. This vision that we have is a vision that we are able to see beyond the surface level of human limitation. And the goal of a church, which makes it different than any other organization, the goal of a church, Sandra, can you please come and just stand up the steps? The goal of a church, this is what makes us different. When I've healed myself 
And when I've learned, I need to go and bring somebody else. I need to go back to where I was and say, come on with me. I want you to meet Ayana. OK? And then when I bring Sandra, I need to go back and say, Julian, I, I, I know where you are right now. I've been there. The goal of my life is to bring Julian across and say, Look, meet, meet, meet Sandra, meet Ayana. All right, and then that's not enough. I can't just rest in my laurels. I know who I am. No, no, I gotta be like, Cynthia, I heard you know you're having some struggles here. Let me meet you to a group of people that can behold the Christ in you. I know who you are. Meet your family. This is who we are. Let's give it up. This is what makes us different. We are exactly where we need to be, right here and right now in this church. Each one of you are exactly where you need to be. There's a wonderful Japanese proverb. It says, vision without action is daydreaming. OK? And then it says, action without vision is a nightmare. OK, now we have a clear vision. We have a clear vision. We have the course. We have the direction. Did you ever act without thinking? It usually works better when we think and act. OK, and so our mission will guide us to stability. It is joy-filled and it is exciting. And my aim this morning is to proclaim it like a trumpet blows, you know, and to acknowledge that our church has a dream and no one of us can forget the dream. Manifesting our vision this year, it will call forth new energy. It will call forth new ideas. It will call out of each one of us a deep and loving faith that we already have for this church. And I know we can do this because we are standing on the shoulders of 50 years, 50 years of consciousness. Mildred, her, husband, her son, was the board president of this church, Terry Simonson, Judy's husband. And hours, hours, hours before they hired me, Terry made his transition. And, and I was there that day. I never met Terry. But I heard he was a no-nonsense board president, and you didn't mess with Terry. And let me tell you, I pray to Terry. I pray to Francine. I pray to Reverend Ken Williamson. I pray to all the great men and women who have came before me in this church, because I know the power that this church has to touch people, because it has touched me. And I see it has touched you. Holy Spirit, overflow this place. Decorate our walls with grace and mercy and healing and redemption. Find searching souls, Lord, have your way, we humbly pray. Yes, my earnest prayer on this morning is that God awakens each and every one of us and fills us with this new joy-filled energy that will take hold of our ministry. I feel it and I pray that each one of you hear that deep yes in your soul. And this is what I want. And this is what I called forth. Yes, this is a holy vision. And yes, I am a part of this holy vision. I am thrilled to be a part of a church where this kind of dreaming is happening. I reflect on 1 Corinthians, the third chapter in the sixth verse, and it says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. We do our part, and God, as we understand, God is already the growth. Yes, I want to be able to say in years to come that I was a planter, I was a waterer, I was there that day Reverend Robin proclaimed the new mission 2011. I was one of those strong, God-centered people who spoke that mission into being in my own life and turn this whole church around. We don't rejoice today because the mission is good and it's optimistic and it's cute. We rejoice today because the commitment we make to pour ourselves into this church, to pour ourselves into our own new understanding of life, to pour our time and our talent and our treasure into the highest idea that God has for each one of us. That is my prayer. 
That is what I believe. This is who I was called to be on this day. And so let's be willing to realize it's in our mind. The greatness that this church is, is in our mind. The greatness that you are next week is in your mind right now. The healings are in our mind. The freedom is in our mind. Let's just agree right now on greatness for this church because each one of us is a child of God. We are great, we are whole, we are perfect, and we are seated here united under this roof. Unity of Hollywood, repeat after me. Unity of Hollywood, Unity of Hollywood. is a spiritually progressive community. Dedicated to healing and transformation. Dedicated to healing and transformation. Healing and transforming the lives of all people. Healing and transforming the lives of all people. Come on, do it. I want to see all people. And I'm one of those people. And I'm one of those people. Through prayer, education, and love. Through prayer, education, and love. I am healed. I am, I am transformed. I am I am a child of God. Amen. God bless you. Stand and celebrate him. God bless you.